Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and I hope everybody is having an awesome day. I'm doing pretty good. Finally got a day off work, so we are going to do a distro review today. Today we are looking at Elementary OS 5.1. Yeah, I know there are already a ton of 5.1 uh, reviews on YouTube, but hey, let's let's do another one. Get another person's opinion on it. Uh, I'm going to walk through the installation process so you can see that, see what it looks like when you first fire it up and first get it installed and all that kind of good stuff. So while the intro rolls, I'm going to get a cup of coffee and then we're going to come back and start installing elementary. Hundred percent Sumatra beans. Definitely, if you've never tried Sumatra, best coffee known to mankind. Anyway, okay, so here we are. We are in a virtual machine. Actually, I'm using GNOME boxes here. We're going to do the in, run through the installation of Elementary. It's the same freaking installer that they use in just about every Ubuntu distribution. Tons and tons of distributions use this installer, but we'll walk through it. So uh, we're going to do install elementary. Okay. Keyboard's correct for me. Uh, updates. I want to download updates, install third party software. All right, and then here you could go and do some set up LVM, do an encryption, erase the disk and install elementary. That's what we're going to do. Or you could do some manual partitioning, come down and click on that, and you could do manual partition. We'll just go with the auto installer, click on install now. Yes, we want to do this. Uh, yeah, that's my correct time zone. Name. That's our computer's name. Oh, yeah. Al 9000. Those of you old enough or are sci fi fans, you know what the reference is. Give an easy password since it's a virtual machine. And no, we do not want to automatically log in. And yes, require my password to log in. Click continue. Boom, there we go. So I'm going to pause the video and once the installation's done, we'll come back and take a look at what we got. Okay, we are back. And uh, yeah, I know the screen resolution looks a little weird and I've run into this a few times on uh, uh, running GNOME boxes that when you first go to log in, uh, the, the screen resolution is correct, but and it is what it is. Anyway, um, so if you use previous versions of Elementary, you can, you'll notice this is a little different than we than we've had before. Um, I think what they got for a login screen pretty nice. You got uh, you know time date. Um, everybody's got their own little login icon, whatever. Obviously, I haven't had a chance to go and put my picture on or anything like that log in see what we got and here we are so one of the features that um, you know a lot of people are talking about it um, is this new welcome screen and uh, you know a lot of distributions have welcome screens these days um, so obviously this is a unique feature, but they got some good information here for you. Um, you know, a basic guide, it'll kind of walk you through some stuff, community support, how to get involved, move on to the next page. Do you want to set up location service, turn it on or turn it off? Uh, nightlight, do you want it on or off? Some housekeeping stuff, do you want to automatically get rid of temporary files, trash files, that kind of stuff. 
We want to go to the App Center. We'll, we'll get there eventually, but not yet. And uh, boom, ready to go. go. And it gives you a link to system settings. Except not, you know, it's not a, there's not tons that you can do here, um, but uh, there's some good information there. Um, I will say that I kind of like, I kind of like what they've done in in uh, Ubuntu Mate and oh we got some updates um, in, in Ubuntu Mate and then um, uh, oh Ubuntu Budgie they've got they've got some really neat um, um, welcome screens there where it'll allow you to kind of walk through some setup as far as um, do you want to add these apps do you want to change you know this uh uh this theme that kind of stuff so you know i'd i'd like to see more of that kind of stuff here but uh yeah it, it's a nice welcome screen so let's take a look at the app center open boom so uh you can see when you come over here this is where we don't need to do any updates right now but this is where you would do updates if you need to. You can also see all the apps that you installed. Um, coming over here, let's make it. So you got some trending apps, uh, recently updated, that sort of thing. And then everything's broken down by category. So anything that is in the, uh, the bell, can't talk today. Oh, anything that's in the Ubuntu repositories, you're gonna find it here. You're also gonna find a whole bunch of, I guess I should call them ecosystem apps, uh, homebrew apps. I'm not sure what to exactly to refer to them, um, but they are apps that are being developed uh, to add to um, Elementary's App Center. Um, as you can see, some of them have, go to this color pick, or they've got a suggested amount to donate you can pick a different amount um you know if you're just going to try out the app yeah go ahead and download it for free but please you know if if you're going to really use it kick them a few dollars so that they can uh, you know help fund the development of these apps um this is one right here this color picker it's very nice color picker hey, again it's it's not some huge you know all-encompassing you know like Libre Office, Office Suite. You know, it's a small basic app. It has a specific function, um, but it does it very well. It's very nice, uh, works fine, um, very functional. And then on pretty much just about all these apps, their, their look, it fits in with the whole elementary look and feel sort of thing. Um, the desktop folder, if you're into the desktop folders, uh, another another good app here. Um, there's lots of, of of really nice apps that uh, that you can find in this app center. Definitely uh, worth going through. Get on Elementary. Tell you what, let's do a walk through the desktop layout. Um, you know, it really hasn't changed from previous, actually the previous few versions of Elementary. But for those of you that are new to Elementary OS, let's we'll kind of walk through it here. So got our application menu up here you can click it um, or I believe it is a tab window space that's it is the shortcut to open up your menu now you, it's searchable so you know you can type in the app center to get the app center um, or you can scroll through it and uh, once you get so many apps, it'll have pages that you can go to. And you can change the view so you can go to a categorized view, whichever way that you like. Time and date in the center, click on it, opens up a calendar with any um, events that you got going on. Over here on this side, we've got our volume indicator. And it's also kind of routed into your music player. So if you got a mu if you got something playing on your music player, it'll show up right here. You can hit, uh, play it, fast forward, pause, that kind of stuff. Here's your network, notifications, power. Down at the bottom, you have a nice little dock. They use Plank if, if you're interested uh, in 
what uh, what dock they're using in Plank. Um, very nice. It's simple, but it is a very nice dock application. Um, and I haven't changed any of this from the defaults there. So, um, so the multitasking view. If you click on that, um, so this is how you can access the various um, uh, virtual desktops and move them around. So you can add another, like going like that, move on to another one, all that kind of stuff. Um, got that. Epiphany is the default web browser. I've got mixed opinions on running on using Epiphany. For start, I love the UI on Epiphany. And it works great with elementary OS. What I have found though is Okay, it's not too bad on that website, but I have found that on a lot of website, um, Epiphany is just a real dog with loading the page up. I remember right, Wikipedia was one. Yeah, basically we're waiting, wait, boom, and and I've I've had it where you know that's fast for some of the websites I've gone to read in another one that's not bad hey anyway, there's there's been some websites where I think that there's a problem with the website because it takes so long um, and then I go and open up another web browser and you know Chrome and and Firefox they just you know they go right to the page um, but you know in any case even on even on other websites I mean it is way way slower um, loading as opposed to Firefox Chrome Chromium uh, Brave all those other uh, browsers and um, which is a shame because there's some really ni nice features of uh, of uh, epiphany one of the things that i really like is let me find it install site as a web app so you can go so like for the for here we're on reddit so install site as a web app leave it as reddit it'll create that little you can use that for its icon create boom and so now yeah it shows up in your applications now click on that and it'll go right to the Reddit page. So real nice. So like, you know, your most commonly visited websites, you can go and do the web apps for those and uh, so that you can just go, you know, right from your menu. You could, I believe, and, and I think you can go and even pin them down here to plank. So boom, 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 get to them real fast if you need to. So it's a feature I like, but the lag on, on opening a lot of websites that, that's one thing that's driven me away from Epiphany. Okay, so there the the Pantheon Mail. And I'm just gonna I'm not gonna set set it up, but basically for those of you that have used um, the email uh, application Geary, this is just a fork of Geary. And in fact, for for many years they used Geary until Yorba uh, um, quit developing it. Um, they they forked it for for their needs. Geary continued with other developers. Very nice email application. However, as compared to like Thunderbird and, and Evolution and some of the other email clients that are out there, this thing is email only. So, <clears throat> if you're looking for something that's got calendars, uh, task manager, all that kind of stuff, this isn't your application. But if you just want email, very nice. Uh, the calendar once again nice calendar played around with this in the past um, you can go and sync it with uh, Google account uh, other online accounts excellent excellent calendar um, what else we got the music player uh, wor works great very basic but works great same thing with the videos um, 
this is kind of one the the one oddball here and i guess it's because of playing the videos that it doesn't have the same silver gray um theming and i guess it's because it'd be distracting when you're watching videos i don't know but it's kind of the only one that stands out Okay, the photo app is a fork of shot well um excellent excellent photo manager um when it comes to editing photos it's very basic so now if you want something where you can just you can load your pictures up and then send them off to facebook and wherever you want great application if you want to do some serious editing this is not your app or actually well i use um on my desktop i've been using uh shotwell as my uh, my photo manager because i like the management capabilities of it and then i've got it set up so that when i want to actually edit a photo it opens up in a dark table because that is a very powerful editor and let's look at some of the stuff we got in our system settings <clears throat> so applications and tweaks to the desktop cool thing here you can besides playing around with desktop or you know your desktop wallpaper got some appearance stuff text size that kind of thing Make some tweaks to the dock and then set up your hot corners. Very nice there. Um, so, like that multitasking view, you can set it up so this bottom corner will show you the multitasking view. I'm not sure if it'll do it in the virtual machine. Um, but setting up the hot corners, um, very, I found it very, very useful. To me, it's kind of one of the things that one of the reasons you would want to go and use elementary is setting up those hot corners to be able to do various things anyway uh so moving on with system settings got language notifications security stuff um set up your displays keyboard keyboard shortcuts speaking of keyboard shortcuts if you just need a quick reference hit the windows by a super key and you get a list of the keyboard shortcuts easy quick way to get to them but anyway here's where you can go and set up more shortcuts keyboard behavior that kind of thing. set up your printers here power management mouse and touchpad um you know most of the stuff we see in other other distributions sound they got one of the best default sound setups that i've seen um you can go and and really customize how you want how you get different things set up so much much better than um like you see by default on gnome um where am i at uh, parental controls um i don't have anything set up here but very nice having that having that installed by default user accounts you can go and add other users so let's talk a little bit about elementary tweaks this is something that is not installed it is not created by the elementary team basically what this is is some additional settings uh, that that you can control of <clears throat> by installing by installing this picture over here and, and actually i tell you what we're going to go and install it because it's going to let me talk about a couple other things terminal okay so to install it we're going to need to add this ppa now here comes another issue that i've run into with elementary so let's go and copy that and try to paste that in here Yes, I know all about the warnings. Okay, let's add this PPA and put in our password. And boom, you cannot add pass, add PPAs unless you add You would need to add this here. You need to add Come on.
Oh, there it goes. So you got to add uh, software properties common. Um, okay, so my understanding, and I may be wrong on this, but my understanding is, is that the elementary developers do not add this by default so that they can prevent somebody from screwing up their system. The, the logic being that if you know basically if you know Linux well enough uh, to go and install this then you know Linux well enough to go and install the PPAs. Personally I'm, a, I'm, I'm of the belief that you should allow somebody to screw up their system so that it's a learning experience but that's just kind of my take. Anyway so we're going to add that package um, I understand why they do it. For me, if I want, if I was to use this for my, you know, main distribution, it's an aggravation. It it's kind of the um, same aggravation I feel when I get on Ubuntu and they lock you out of adding um, um, uh, GNOME extensions, and you got to add. An extension so that you can add other extensions I don't agree and let somebody screw it up um, it's it's a learning experience All right, and there we go. We will install elementary tweaks, and then I can show that to you. Boom, there we go. Oh. And it gets added into the system settings. You see now you got tweaks right here, and it allows you to change your theming, your icons, cursor icon, uh, the window control layout. So, like, if you want to go to... Ubuntu style or close only left, close only right. That's cool. Um, fonts, change the animations, some miscellaneous stuff, changing stuff to files, the launcher, the terminal, videos. So, my whole opinion on the tweaks. Is that this is stuff that really should have been added to system settings to begin with um, I can't think of any reason why you should why why a developer needs to prevent you from changing the default fonts uh, title bar fonts the, the theming I just I can't think of a good reason why you know to, to prevent you from doing that um, and I have the same criticism about GNOME. The the GNOME Tweaks app, as far as I'm concerned, that should be part of system settings there. This is stuff that you're not going to hurt your system by changing the theme. So the, you know, the, the same argument that they use for why you can't add a PPA, I, I don't buy that here. So what the reason is, I don't know. Um, the whole kind of, thought behind Linux is freedom of choice so give somebody the freedom of choice I mean granted you know somebody that knows what they're doing can go in and make changes but why make it difficult on somebody but anyway other than that kind of that little thing um, and you know bring up the PPA thing I really like this distribution you know playing around with the past couple of weeks everything has worked the way that it should um, it's fairly light on memory it's not as light as say uh, um, Lubuntu uh, you know you're not in that ter territory but it's it's fairly lightweight if you got a laptop or desktop four gigs of RAM everything's gonna run just fine uh, obviously if you're running some application that needs a lot more memory than that yeah but the desktop itself no it it's fine on uh, you know four or five gigs of RAM um, 
it's got some really nice apps. You've got access to you know all of the the Ubuntu um, uh, software repositories. So there's a lot to like here. Um, <clears throat> for me, it's it's not really my thing. Just from the standpoint that um, I feel locked down. Um, you know the you know there's so much that you have to change so that it's going to be the way that I want it. Like I don't know that I want to go through that to set this up, but I think for the average person that um, you know is not the you know um, Linux tweaker that I am um, that just wants to install the distribution sit down and get to work you're going to be great here um you know maybe they want to sit down be able to after installation they do an update they add their office suite of choice and then they can get right to work boom this is a great distribution for them it looks great one of the really nice things that they 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 put a lot of work into is making sure that everything looks nice and there's a a, a pretty pretty strong uniformity between apps and how things look and so I, I really gotta give them a lot of credit on that um because that is something that i i really do appreciate in in my desktop is something that looks nice well that pretty much finishes things up here i hope you have enjoyed the video and uh you know if you're not a subscriber subscribe and uh, you know, get the notifications so that you can uh, see when I got new videos coming out. Got some good stuff coming your way. Um, I'm gonna be changing up my my main desktop pretty soon. I'm not gonna let you know what that is until you actually get to see it. Um, it's gonna be different from what I've been doing lately. So definitely check that out. Got some other reviews and tutorials coming your way. Uh, what else we got? Uh, oh, questions, comments, all that kind of stuff. Leave it down below. I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. And I hope to see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.